In this video, we're going to go over two column proofs with segments, or basically you can say segment proofs. So let's say we have this segment with the points A, B, C, and D. And we're given that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Our task is to prove that segment AC is congruent to segment BD. Go ahead and try that. So let's create two columns. We're going to put the statements in the first column and then the reasons for those statements in the second column. Now the first thing we should write as our statement is what's given. That is segment AB is congruent to segment CD. And that's a given. Now what's the next step that we can do? The next step is sort of a formality. If segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then mathematically speaking, we could say that AB is equal to CD. Now, what's the reason for this? What can we put in the second column? For this situation, you can say definition of congruent segments. So I'm not going to write the whole sentence out just to conserve space, but you get the point. Now, let's move on to number three. So let's talk about what we're trying to do. We're trying to prove that AC, which is this part, is congruent to BD. We know that AB is equal to CD. So the only part that's missing is BC. Notice that AB plus BC will give us segment AC and BC plus BD will give us, I mean, BC plus CD will give us BD. So this tells us that we need to add BC to both sides of this equation. But before we do that, let's write down another formality. We're going to say that BC is equal to BC based on the reflexive property. Now, you might be wondering, why do we need to do that? Some teachers may require it, others may not, but just in case, we're going to put that there. So now we're going to add statements two and three, the equations for it. So we're going to get AB plus BC, basically adding the left side, and adding the right side of the two equations, we're going to get that's going to equal BC plus CD. Now, this is basically the addition property of equality. I'm just going to write addition. Now, let's move on to step five. So what is AB plus BC equal to? So as we said before, AB plus BC is AC. So let's make that our statement for number five. AB plus BC is equal to AC. And focusing on the right side of the equation, BC plus CD, that's going to be BD. So let's write that as well. BC plus CD is equal to BD. So what should we write on the right side for this? This is the segment addition postulate. So I'm just going to write a segment addition on the right side. So now our next step is to replace. Because AB plus BC is equal to AC, in equation 4, we're going to replace AB plus BC with AC in step 6. Now, BC plus CD is equal to BD. So we're going to substitute BC plus CD with BD. And this is, as you guessed it, the substitution property. 
Now think about how we went from steps one to two using definition of congruent segments. So now we're going to go in the reverse order from statement six to statement seven. If AC is equal to BD, then we could say that segment AC is congruent to segment BD based on definition of congruent segments. And so that's how we can prove that these two segments are congruent using two column proofs. Now let's work on a similar but different problem. And let's change the letters. So we're going to use Q, R, S, T. Given that segment QS is congruent to segment RT, go ahead and prove the following statement. Go ahead and show that segment QR is congruent to segment ST. So this is basically the reverse of the last problem, but feel free to pause the video and work on this example. So number one is going to be what we're given. That is QS is congruent to RT. What's our next step? Our next step is saying that QS is equal to RT. And the reason for that is going to be definition of congruent segments. Now let's focus on QS. QS, as we can see, is the sum of QR and RS. So let's write that in statement three. QS is equal to QR plus RS. Now, what about RT? RT is the sum of RS and ST. So RT is equal to RS plus ST. And the reason for this, just like in the last problem, is going to be the segment addition postulate. Now what's next? The next thing is substitution. We can replace QS with QR plus RS. And then on the right side of equation two, or the equation that's in statement two, we can replace RT with RS plus ST. So this is going to be substitution. Now, notice that we have RS on both sides. So in order to get QR equal to ST, which we have here, we need to subtract both sides by RS. Before we do that, Let's write down another formality. Let's say RS is equal to itself based on the reflexive property. Now we're going to take statement four and subtract it by statement five. So these two will cancel and we're going to have QR is equal to ST. And this is based on the subtraction property. Now, our final step, step seven, is to say that segment QR is congruent to segment ST based on definition of congruent segments. And so that's how we can show that these two segments are congruent to each other using two column proofs. Now, let's work on another example. So let's say we have two separate segments. 
The first one will have the letters A, B, and C, and the second one, D, E, F. So let's say that we're given that AC is congruent to DF. And let's say that B is the midpoint of segment AC. And we're also given that E is the midpoint of segment DF. Your task is to prove that segment AB is congruent to segment DE. So let's think about what we have. We're told that AC is congruent to DF. And our goal is to show that AB is congruent to DE. So go ahead and work on this example. Write up a two column proof to show that AB is congruent to DE. So let's start with the first one. AC is congruent to DF. That's given. Our second given statement is that B is the midpoint of segment AC. And then our third given statement is that E is the midpoint of segment DF. Now, what else can we say? Well, if segment AC is congruent to segment DF, we could say that AC is equal to DF based on definition of congruent segments. Now, remember, we're trying to make these two equal to each other. And it stands to reason that AB is going to be one half of AC. Let's say if AC is 10 units long and B is the midpoint, that means AB and BC has to be 5, just for the sake of example. 5 is one half of 10. 5 corresponds to AB, 10 corresponds to AC. So we could say that just to think about the whole situation, we can say that AB is one half of AC. But before we do that, let's focus on statement two and divide this equation by two. If we divide both sides by two, we'll get this equation. One half AC is equal to one half DF. Now, what's the reason for this? Since we divided both sides by a number, we could say that this is due to the division property. Now, what's our next step? Notice that we could replace 1 half AC with AB. But before we do that, we need to say that AB is equal to 1 half AC. And likewise, we can also say that DE is one half of DF. Now, why can we say these things? How do we get this information? Well, we realized that AB was one half of AC because B was the midpoint of AC. So therefore, this is due to definition of midpoint. Now, we can substitute one half AC with AB. So in step five, we're replacing or substituting one half AC with AB, and we're going to replace one half DF with DE. So we have AB is equal to DE, and this is due to the substitution property. Now, step eight, our last step, we could say that AB is congruent to DE based on definition 
of congruent segments. And that's basically it. So that's how you can prove that these two segments are congruent to each other. So that's it for this video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe. And thanks again for watching.